But let's talk about actual contraction of skeletal muscle. So what we think of as shortening, but in reality, it's sliding filaments, as you know already. So to initiate this, remember that this is, what is it? Calcium being released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum is going to initiate contraction. That's what we just left off with the neuromuscular junction. So what does this calcium do? Here we've got a resting sarcomere. Remember there's overlap of these thick and thin filaments and you should be able to identify where the um, A band, this is the overlap portion versus the I band is the thin filaments only. And this overlap region is going to change when we have contraction occur. And this again is initiated by calcium. So what's gonna happen is at rest, we've got the thick filaments, which is myosin, and the thin filaments, actin. So red here, just like up here, purple, just like up here with those myosin heads. And they are just sitting right next to each other, hanging out. Um, notice that their the myosin heads are bound by ADP and a phosphate. So that's ATP that's been broken down into AT, ADP and a phosphate. When we have calcium flow into this cell from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it is going to get in here and it is going to bind to troponin. That's what's happening right here. Calcium is binding to troponin and causing a physical change in the conformation of that protein. This causes tropomyosin to shift and exposes the active sites on actin. So if we were to write this down here, calcium binds to troponin moves tropomyosin, exposes myosin binding site on actin, changing the conformation of those thin filaments. So now actin can bind to myosin. This is going to initiate contraction. And we still have ADP and the phosphate groups on those myosin heads. Nothing's happened yet except for calcium has exposed the active sites. And we're going to have a process that uses ATP. You sh that shouldn't be too much of a surprise because you know that muscle contraction requires energy. And I also had ADP up here. That's going to give you a hint that ATP is going to be involved. So let's look at this contraction cycle. What's gonna happen here if we start with these cross bridges forming, that those cross bridges occur due to calcium coming in and moving tropomyosin to allow the active sites to be exposed. That allows cross bridges between actin and myosin to form, meaning they bind to each other. That's what the cross bridge is thin and thick filaments interacting. This is the on position. So now the muscle has been turned on via calcium. Um, then what happens is because of that binding, this ADP plus a phosphate group is released. Those pop right off because protein structure changes when the myosin heads bind to actin. That changes the structure the ADP and the phosphate groups pop off and that causes the myosin heads to pivot. They're going to move this direction. Um, this is actually called the power stroke. ADP release causes the myosin heads to move. This is actually what causes contraction right here. It's a tight binding, binded state. Um, Actually, this is what causes rigor mortis 
if you don't have a new ATP come in because you're dead, you stay here, contracted, firm muscles that cannot contract anymore, but cannot relax either. In the living body, we've got a new ATP coming in, and that's why there's the mitochondria, they're so important in your muscle cells that are producing ATP all the time. So ATP can come in and that causes the cross bridges to detach, releases myosin from actin, um, reactivating myosin. So that's what's happening um, from here to here. Once those cross bridges detach, ATP is there. ATP, this just reminds you of this, just in case, what happens to ATP, it is hydrolyzed or broken down into ADP plus a phosphate group. That's what's happening right here at this step. ATP goes from ADP and a phosphate group that causes myosin to reactivate again. Go back to this position, that orientation. Um, is our muscle still considered on? Yes, calcium is still present this whole time, meaning this cycle will keep going around and around again as long as calcium is present and it will contraction will continue to um, increase and shorten the muscles until ATP is no longer present. So you need both ATP for this process to continue over and over and around again. Without ATP, you get stuck here. Um, and it's gonna continue until calcium is removed. Calcium is going to be around until the signal stops. So that's gonna be muscle relaxation that we'll talk about in the next video. Um, it's going to require active pumping and removal of calcium as well as enzymes to break down acetylcholine, which is that original stimulus. So to walk through this entire process, what we had is an action potential from a somatic motor neuron coming from the spinal cord and causing excitation, a depolarization in the muscle cell itself. This action potential traveled down the T tubules to cause calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum due to that change in voltage that was the action potential. Calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, um, that calcium binds to troponin, causes the actin, myosin, uh, actin binding site to be exposed so that you can have those cross bridges form, ATP is necessary for that to occur over and over again. This is that contraction cycle here with calcium allowing the bridges to form. And this causes the sarcomeres to shorten, which in reality is not proteins getting actually shortening, but overlap increasing. This causes muscle tension to be produced. Um, this would cause a single twitch, so a single contraction relaxation, relaxation cycle contraction relaxation cycle is a single twitch of your muscles. We will talk briefly about then how those build together. So remember, we've got many sarcomeres, many muscle cells in your entire muscle. A lot of force can be generated. And then over time, we can add those together, summation, to allow for smooth muscle movements and not just single twitches.